I feel very honored to be a part of an organization like that to actually do exactly what it says and that's putting kids up front and making sure that the future is taken care of. You know, every, well, I shouldn't say every kid, but I mean, you know, in Canada, it's very common for kids to, to grow up playing hockey and obviously watching hockey on TV. It's become a lot more prevalent now. And, uh, and now, uh, although some of the prices are pretty high, getting to a game is, is a fantastic experience. And, and um, just even getting to talk to some of the players that uh, some of the stars in the league is, is a, such an exciting um, uh, a time for a kid. And, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a hockey player. It can be a... a it could be a bank manager, it could be a, uh, an artist, it could be a performer, and anybody that kind of makes an impact um, on a kid and, and his future can have an, a very you know, uh, everlasting effect and a very profound effect on, on, on what kids can do and, and the, the path that they take. And, you know, for me, um, you know, I'd always wanted to play hockey and, you know, I had, had, had goals in mind and wanting to, to make the, the National League, but really never met any, any of the prominent hockey players. Um, but I love to play and I love to watch and just as it happened in Transcona, which is a suburb of Winnipeg, uh, where they were hosting the Manitoba Junior B, uh, the, the Western Canada Junior B Championships. It was about 1979 or 80, so I would have been 10 years old. And so my mom let me ride my bike to the, to the rink and pay my dollar, whoever it was, to get in and watch the game. And long story short, they won the game and it was, it was fantastic and, and uh, you know, the home team winning was, was a great experience. And so I just didn't want the day to end and managed to stick around the dressing room and kind of look down the hallway and, um, you know, just as a little kid kind of peeking and, you know, curiosity, a very curious kid. And, and, um, and one of the players had noticed me. I think I, um, I delivered papers to him as, as a kid and he noticed me down the hall and actually asked me, um, you know, to come in and, and you know, the, the, half the guys had left already. And, and I was super nervous and, and didn't know what I was getting myself into and if I was in trouble or not. And um, it was just a great uh, experience just being in the dressing room. There was about, you know, eight or nine guys still there. You could, I still remember the, you know, the sweat, the, the, the smell of the sweat there and the orange peels on the ground and tape balls and, um, you know, kind of remnants of the champagne had been, had been, you know, the bottles had been corked and popped and uh, it was just terrific. And. Uh, you know, one of the guys, like I said, recognized me as his paper boy and said, hey, he's a little hockey player and, you know, he's going to be a good hockey player one day. And, and I remember he gave me his little pin. I mean, it's a little tournament pin that is so insignificant maybe to those guys even um, at the time. Uh, and who knows, maybe some of them kept it or not. But one of the guys gave me his pin and, I mean, I just, uh, I just kept that pin. I held it in my hand and I remember getting on my bike and riding home as fast as I could to, to tell everybody about my experience. And, um, you know, they weren't, they weren't uh, professionals. In fact, none of them went on to be professional hockey players, but, you know, I'm sure they're, uh, you know, they're various jobs and great members of the community. And, but at that time, they were the people that I looked up to and, uh, and in, in really encouraged me to, to kind of want to be a hockey player. And, um, and I'll never forget that day. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Kelly, and as some of you know, I grew up in a family of 10 kids. And although I never would have said we were poor, between uh, my dad's work as a construction worker and 10 kids, let's just say I never saw the inside of a restaurant. But every year, once a year, dad would take one of us to a sporting event, and we didn't have enough to go to the NHL or CFL, but once a year, one of us would go with dad to the Harlem Globetrotters. And I remember the night I got to go, we went in Dad's pickup truck and uh, we parked outside the Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton and it was freezing, but I didn't even notice, I was too excited. And we went in and there was the lights and the, and the basketball court in the middle of where the ice would be and all these people. And I remember sitting there and then 
that music started, you know? Uh, and then out they came, the Harlem Globetrotters. And it was so, uh, when the game started, they were like dribbling behind their back and passes, and Metal Arc Lemon sunk a hook shot from center court, and the other team couldn't even touch the ball. And I remember one point, Marcus Haynes, their dribbler, the rest of the Harlem Globetrotters sat down, and he dribbled through the entire opposition, on his knees, behind his back, everywhere, and then scored. It was unbelievable. And in, in the intermission, I got a program, and in it they had Metal Arc Lemon's hand, a picture of it, actual size. And so I put mine on, and my fingers didn't even reach the edge of his palm. And I thought, these people are giants. And the rest of the game, and they won, and it was incredible. And then driving home, I remember talking to Dad and saying, Dad, the program says that Marcus Haynes dribbles six times a second. Can you believe that? And did you believe Metal Arc Lemon was going to sink that short shot from center court? And and. And that thing with the pail, you thought there was water in it, but it was just confetti. And when they had the rubber band on the ball, how did they even get that out there? Never even saw it happen. It was incredible. And when we got home, all the lights were dark because it was a bit late. So we just sat in the pickup truck and talked, me holding on to the program and talking with my dad. Decades later, I still remember uh, Metal Arc Lemon and Curly Neal and Marcus Haynes and that the song was called Sweet George Brown. But what I remember more than anything was being with my dad. And for that night, getting them all to myself. Ten kids and the amount he worked, that didn't happen very often. But for then, in that moment, in that truck, I got them. And um, I've supported kids up front since the beginning because they give kids memories, kids who need it and who deserve it. And sometimes that memory is going to a sporting event and seeing a hero, or maybe it's going to a to a theatrical or going to a theatrical event or a play and seeing a story that they, they never saw happen that way before or, or maybe it's going to a concert and being affected in a way that only music can. But you know, selfishly, I like to think that kids up front every now and then give something that is priceless. A night with their dad or a night with their mom. So you're supporting kids up front and it, it, it's not about the money, although it is, and it's not just about tickets, although it is. What you're doing is giving kid a memory that decades later he'll still want to talk about. I encourage others to actually take part in Kids Up Front and, you know, play your part because, just like I said, it's all about putting kids up front because I'm pretty sure, just like me when I was a kid, there was somebody who was older than me that put me in front of them. So just having that opportunity, and everyone's had the opportunity before, I encourage everybody to do the same. Um, but it doesn't take a superstar, you know, to, to make an impact on, on a kid. It can just be a friendly face and, and uh, somebody that's, you know, just takes the time to maybe explain whether it's the rules of the game or, or um, you know, anything about the game. Um, you can really turn turn a kid into a fan and, and, and turn a, a fan into a super fan. So um, I, I'm blessed and honored to have that ability to do that and, and very uh, uh, thankful for Kids Up Front to give me that opportunity. Going to a game makes me quite happy and I really appreciate it because it's the first time